guys back with another video so I decided to make a video called the taxidermy tour I have a lot of taxidermy so I just wanted to show a little bit of it maybe give some stories on some of the pieces I have so we're I guess the first thing to start with would be start the smallest here's my collection of deer antlers I've taken over the years bow and rifle this happens to be my first deer I ever got it was a button buck my dad told me if I got a deer he'd get it mounted for me so I got a button buck he kept his promise he got it mounted this is actually my first buck this is an old ragged looking mount it had a broken rack that was my first buck and I was very proud of it there's another deer I got as you notice it has a red color to the fur on it it's a little bit different than what most deer are it also has half a rack and back at, in that day that was a big buck and it was something I was very proud of it's my collection of fishing rods and reels as you see I'm a big fan of the Fluger President reels got several of them in there Anyway, he's got several bucks up here over the years, both Pennsylvania and West Virginia. I got another wall here with some buck racks on it. All little guys. This is all before antler restrictions. We started having antler restrictions in 2003. I got a bunch of junk here, a bunch of racks that never made it up there yet. I got this one. This was from a couple years ago. It's one of my nicer bucks. Kind of got it on video. I'm going to sit back here and hopefully we could get something done today because this is my last day. Last day of my vacation, too. So let's see what happens. Well guys, my season comes to an end. I did find that buck and let him go for a good while. And right here is my daughter's first deer. It's a little button buck that was her first deer. I was very proud of her to take her out and get that deer. I actually did a video on it, on the deer on that mound itself. Uh, several years ago I was I really wanted to get a wood dock. I wanted one in the worst way. I wanted to actually get a pair of them to get mounted. So I made the base. I sent them off to Colorado to get mounted to Birdman Studios. He did an excellent job on them. As you can see, a lot of guys probably won't notice this. See how the wing is outside, it's not tucked in the pocket like it should be? Reason is, is when I got the ducks, they had a lot of pin feathers and I couldn't find a taxidermist in my area that was willing to mount them. They just didn't want to bother with them with the pin feathers. I took them to Bird, I sent them to Birdman. I contacted him first. He said he could do them. He said there's a couple of tricks he could do to try to hide, you know, places where the feathers fall out. I guess that's what happens. The feathers fall out when they have pin feathers. And I guess some of these feathers here must have come out. And this is the best way he could think of to make it so that it would still look presentable. He did a very good job. This I used the resin. Looks like water. One of these days I'm going to get a glass case to put that in. There's my daughter's first squirrel. She's got a fox squirrel. It's her first year hunting. That was her first game animal. I sent that off to get mounted. I'm going to take this down. This is a, a turkey feather. It's my turkey fan from this year. 
Anyways, there's a four point buck I got with a bow. And that same year, my dad shot a buck. I got it mounted for him. Again, this was before antler restrictions. Back then, any buck was a trophy. All right, so let's step out here. It's my daughter's buck. I've seen that buck the year before. It was actually running with this buck here. They're actually running together. But I got this buck and actually saw this the buck my daughter got here. I saw him after I shot that buck. So the following year, in the same, probably within 50 yards of where I saw that deer, my daughter got this buck. There's a duck I got mounted. I did a video on that recently where I unboxed it. I got it, had it sent out. I got it back. That's my turkey fan from last year. Hi guys, I just got a turkey with my Benelli, watch what happens here, he wants to fight with his buddy. It's that avian X, uh, I forget what it's called, Trophy Tom, and there's a little eight point I got in West Virginia. Back then we used to spend a lot of time in West Virginia archery hunting, I got that with the bow. Uh, me and two other buddies went hunting, we went after deer, and we ended up with, in I believe four days hunting, we ended up with five deer between all three of us, and that was with, uh, with Buzz. Alright, there's a buck on the end here. Now this was before antler restrictions, it was an eight point, at that time it was my biggest buck. I actually used a McKenzie target for a decoy for that buck in the rut. Now here's a buck I mounted myself. The ears don't look very good on it. I wish I'd uh, did a better job. But that was I got that buck with a rifle in Pennsylvania. I actually saw this buck on the first day. All I saw was his rack because I shot a doe with a pistol. And I didn't know this buck was in the briar patch behind me. And I shot the doe and I seen antlers bouncing through the briar patch. That was him. So I went back the following day and I got him. There's this buck here. I got that with the rifle. Actually saw it in archery season, couldn't get a shot. And there's this buck here. This is the one that was running with my daughter's buck. I missed it with the bow in archery season. I got him with the rifle. I mounted that deer. I also mounted this one up here. I mounted those. I used to dabble in taxidermy a little bit. It was getting too expensive sending stuff out. I got this buck with the bow. Uh, 2010, I believe it was. And actually, that's what happened. I shot, I filled my tag on this buck. And then I saw this buck around and I coaxed my daughter to get her license again and go with me. And then she shot that buck with a rifle. So here's my buck from a couple of years ago, 2017, I believe. That was my 2017 buck. He's, you see a lot of clips of him in some of my videos, some of my intros.
got him with a bow. And this buck here I got with a bow. I got this one recently after, I think, antler restrictions. Now I'm going to go to the bear. I hope this air conditioner isn't making a lot of noise. I know that bird is. There's my bear I got. I got it in 2003. Anytime I ever went bear hunting, I think they still do this. I think now you get online. They give you a little diploma type thing for getting a, a bear in Pennsylvania. There's my antenna hanger. I got a digital antenna. It's my moose I shot in Newfoundland. I did a video on this mount with some different pictures. It's three of us went up and we all got moose. Enjoyed the hunt. Had a good time. I hang my digital antenna for my television on, on this rack there. It gets the best reception right there. And we're going to go over here. There's a squirrel I mounted. I actually got him on film. I had him in the freezer for a while. I had the skin in the freezer for a while. I wanted to mess around with taxidermy. I had some supplies left. I actually had a form that fit him. I thought, well, it ain't going to cost me anything. So I threw that together and mounted it myself. I actually was going to do a video on the mounting process. And I had all the video clips. And I don't know what I was doing. I was looking through them on the camera and I wanted to erase a couple and I erased every video I had on it. Wasn't able to do a video. So that's my little taxidermy tour. You guys probably see these behind me in some of my videos. I just want to give a little tour, talk about them. So anyways, just to recap, I mounted this one, this one, this one, that one. Also mounted my daughter's buck there. I don't think I mounted any in my room here. No, I didn't. These were all sent somewhere. Alright guys, quick little tour. That's it for my video. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.